Danielle Dresden, you are a rehabilitation counselor and a co-author of the Sandwich Generation's Guide to Elder Care, Concrete Advice to Simultaneously Care for Your Kids and Your Parents. Danielle, when should the primary caregiver involve other family members, and what advice would you give them on effective communication during this process? Um, it would depend on who would need to be involved as far as what other family members. Does your elderly loved one that, that needs the additional care that you've been providing caregiving for, do they have a spouse? Do we need to, you know, is the spouse then involved? If there is no spouse or, spouse or significant other, are there siblings or other important family members that are very close to this loved one that should be part of the decision-making process? Um, the advice that I would give is communication is key. Keep them involved as much as you can. Give them details. Be specific. If you're calling or you're making a decision as a caregiver that the loved one, the elderly loved one that needs to transition to the next level of care. Let's say, for example, they've been living in their home with minimal assistance, but they really, for safety or other reasons, really need to transition to an assisted living facility. How do you present that to other loved ones? The other loved ones that are involved may live far away or may not be able to have as much time to be around and may be surprised by this decision. So you want to make sure that they're involved and feel like they are part of the decision-making process as well. Because emotions are going to run high during this time, whether it's resentment, guilt, you know, whatever it may be for the other people that you're involving in the process. So again, just communication, I feel, would be the key to keep tension and conflict at a minimum.